while the world continues to progress technologically I swear by Allah faster than its growth in technology it is retrogressing morally and spiritually so this is this is the modern day poverty if we can put it that way that in the midst of affluence there is no joy in the midst of comfort and luxury there is absolutely no joy and perhaps the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam when Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam held the hand of Abu Dhar and he said ya Abu Dhar atara anna kathrat al-mal huwa al-ghina wa qillat al-mal huwa al-faqr oh Abu Dhar do you consider excess of provisions as wealth and lack of provisions as poverty I said, O oh, Nabi of Allah, that is the apparent definition of wealth and poverty. That if you have lot, you are successful, you are healthy, you are prosperous. And if you don't have, then you have a depressed life, you have a sick life. Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, no, no, Abu Zar, you have your facts muddled. Let me set the record correctly. Nabi Alayhi Salaam then said in the rewayat of Ibn Hibban, إنما الغنى غنى القلب ومن كان الغنى في قلبه فلا يضره ما لقي من الدنيا No, Abu Zar, wealth in essence is the contentment of heart. And no, no Niagara Falls and no Victoria Falls can give you that contentment that is divine from Allah. وَمَنْ كَانَ الْغِنَى فِي قَلْبِهِ The one who has contentment in his heart, فَلَا يَضُرُّهُ مَا لَقِيَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Then no amount of calamities and tragedies will harm this man, will depress this man. You see, he's got nothing to do with wealth. He's got nothing to do with health. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ أَوْ وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. In fact, the ayah that I recited that I really want to explore. And that is what Allah says, whoever will obey Allah, Allah promises a good life. What is the definition of a good life? It's the perception that it's a healthy and a wealthy life. Let's define. Let's have a common definition of a good life. And on the other hand, Allah says, whoever disobeys Allah, Allah will give him a narrowed life. The apparent life that the kuffar have is wealth, affluence, comfort, fame, luxury. And yet the Quran says every kafir has a narrowed life. And the believers, Allah say, those who obey Allah, they will have a good life. The most deserving for this good life is the galaxy of the prophets and the noble companions of Nabi alayhi salam because the quality of Iman and Amal Saliha was found in them to the highest extent. Nobody could have this more than them. And hence we do not find health and wealth common amongst all the prophets. At times perhaps it could define a good life but it doesn't necessarily entail the total definition of a good life. Perhaps Allah gives it to some, Allah gave it to Sulaiman alayhi salam. What a kingdom, what a dominion, what a vast empire Allah had given him. Scholars write two things define a good life and a content. This is the definition of a good life which Allah promises. The first is that whatever situation comes in your life, Allah gives you the ability to focus on the reward promise in that challenge in Akhirah. What does Allah give you? A challenge comes on you. The definition of a good life is Allah enables you, Allah empowers you, Allah enriches you. This is not something that I can say or you can purchase. This is divinely inspired. Allah enables you to focus. This is the challenge, this is the calamity, this is on me in my life. This is what my Allah has kept for me in Akhirah. And the second thing that defines a good life is that Allah gives you contentment. Now let's just briefly run through the life of Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah had given him health, wealth, comfort, luxury, affluence. You name it and he had it. 80 years of total prosperity. Thereafter, Allah decided to test him. Allah tested him in such a way, Allah took everything. Allah took all his farms, all his orchards, everything burnt away. The roof of his house, and this is authentic narrations, the roof of his house collapsed, causing all the occupants of his house, that were his 14 children, to die instantly. A person loses one child and never recovers. The trauma of it never recovers. He or she is never the same human onwards. 14 children he loses at one instance. He loses all his farms and that's not all. He develops such a sickness that he has ulcers on his entire body. The only pillar of support that he had was his wife. His wife was the granddaughter of Yusuf alayhi salam. 
حياة نعمته وصحته وزمن بؤسه وبلائه فكانت في الحالين مع زوجها شاكرة صابرة This woman seen the era of prosperity When things are good then the partner says Oh wonderful husband, wonderful What more to complain, why? Because life is prosperous, everything is going well But when difficulties comes when challenges sets in, now this is the time to support your partner. More than often in Western circles, these marriages dissolve. Why? Because they are challenges. But look at through this bond. When Allah gives contentment in the midst of difficulties, what joy there is. So what happens to Ayyub salam? The pillar of support was his wife. And she stands by his side. She stood in the days of prosperity as, the, as well as the days of difficulty. But as life continued, seven years of difficulty, Ayyub salam, the sickness took a toll on her. We often sympathize on a person that is sick. We forget to sympathize with those living with a sick person. At times they need more sympathy than the sick person. So it started taking a toll on her. Seven years lapsed. She comes to her husband. She says, don't you think it's high time you make dua to Allah that now he cures you and you know, once again restores your health and we can see prosperity again. The tunnel is dark. It's raining. It's pouring. Life is narrowing upon us. Don't you think perhaps if Allah can open up things in our life and we have a more brighter future. But this is a Nabi of Allah. He asked his wife, Kam labithtu fir raqa? Oh my wife, how long did we enjoy health and prosperity? So she said, Thamaneen, 80 years, 8 decades. Kam labithtu fil bala? How long did we live in difficulty? And how long am I sick? And how long is it since we lost our children? So she said, it's 7 years. If I recall correct since this difficulties came in our life. So Sayyidina Ayyub said, Ama astahi an atlub min Allahi raf'a bala'i wa ma qadaytu feehi muddata rafa'i. I feel ashamed that when my Allah has given me 80 years of prosperity and my Allah has only tested me for 7 years, I don't have the guts nor do I think my situation justifies me asking Allah. 80 years of prosperity, if Allah tests me with difficulty for 80 years and my days of adversity is in proportion to my days of prosperity, then perhaps I will take the courage of asking Allah. But until 80 years don't lapse, I'm not going to make an attempt to ask Allah. In the midst of sickness, but he's content. He's totally happy. There's divine happiness, divinely contentment. Allah inspires it. وَمَنْ كَانَ الْغِنَى فِي قَلْبِهِ The one who has contentment in his heart, no worldly condition will depress him. Conditions will come upon him. Conditions will come upon him. Like they say, having Allah on your side does not mean sailing on the ocean with no waves. It doesn't mean that. But having Allah on your side means sailing in such a ship which no storm can sink. That is what it means. It doesn't mean you will not have storms. You will have storms, you will have waves. But when you have Allah on your side, no storm will sink that ship. That is divine contentment that Allah will give. And nothing of the world can give you this. It was after seven years, however, when he saw his wife resorted to taking from her hair and selling it, that he said, Rabbi, masani al durru wa anta arham al rahim even look at the way that he asked Allah to cure him. He didn't say, Oh Allah, cure me. Oh Allah, you have harmed me. Oh Allah, you brought this sickness, take it away from me. No, no, no. He said, Oh my Lord, harm has afflicted me. He didn't even attribute it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. And you are the most merciful. Allah says, Fakashafna ma bihi min dur. We took away all the harm away from him. ma'ahum. We gave him his family back and his children back and double their amount. We gave him wealth. Grasshoppers, like the shape of grasshoppers of gold, began to rain onto Ayyub alayhi salam. He used to pick him up and he used to more than what he had. It's in the hadith it says that he would go around and picking as much as he can so quickly. And then Allah sent Jibreel alayhi salam and said to him, Ya Ayyub, are you not already being given enough blessings? Why are you trying to hog, hog everything up? Yani in other words, take all the, don't worry, we're giving you blessings. Why are you so quick in wanting to gather it all? He said, Ya Rabb, who is there that can take enough of your ni'mah, enough of your blessings? I'm gathering your blessing, Ya Rabb. So a Muslim, Allah loves to see his servant taking from his blessing. He loves it. And thanking Allah for his blessing. If when in the hardship, they also thank Allah and they are patient. Hence, it is a perception. It is a deception. It is a delusion. That if I am healthy and I am wealthy, I am successful and I am content. It is contentment. Grab onto it. I swear by Allah, if you have it, you're a king without a throne also.